Okay, so here is um, a cylinder that I've just, I'm saying re-sleeved, but I've kind of had it re-sleeved. Um, so this is from a 1980 RM250, and uh, I'm going to show you another one in a minute, which uh, is from a 400, which had quite a lot of damage. So basically... They have a factory sleeve which is cast into the aluminium so the the sleeve or the liner is um, cast iron and the rest of the barrel is aluminium so it's two different metal parts so because it's cast from stock it's cast in it has to be um, bored out so machined out so it's quite a big job to put a new liner in really uh what you've got to do is you've got to bore out the original liner and then you've got to get the new liner and it's got to be bored out to exactly the right specification uh so it's it's an interference fit um so it won't just push in you wouldn't want it to just be able to push in because it could move around and stuff like that so um, it has to be to an exact an exact fit. Um, and then what you do then is you then push the new liner in. And the critical bit with the new liner is, is uh, it's got to be uh, to the exact right orientation. So it's got to be perfectly straight. So that all the ports line up, because that's the important bit. So with a four-stroke, you don't have the ports inside the barrel. You can see there, we've got transfer ports. We've got a boost port here. We've got an inlet manif We've got an intake port here. Uh, and we've got exhaust port here. So all of that needs to line up. So um, the liner needs to be pressed in. So the way that we do it, or my mate Dave... Uh, does it is he cools the liner down in dry ice and he heats the barrel up to 250 degrees and then so the barrel's expanded the liner's shrunk um he's measured it all out and lined it all up and got all his marks and everything in the right places before he does the next bit and then takes the barrel out of the oven and the liner out of the dry ice and then pushes it in uh, then, once that's done, then this needs to go off to be rebored because it's not bored to the correct size of the piston. Uh, and then uh, these liners, when we press these in, they were slightly proud here, so there was a little tiny lip. So we've just had to take a skim off the top as well. So what that's going to mean is um, that we need to check the squish carefully when the head goes back on. Uh, to make sure it's not too tight so somewhere between one and one and a half mil uh, I would say would be ideal for a 250 um, probably probably aim for the 1.3 mark uh, and then that can be altered either with a thicker head gasket or uh, you could raise it fractionally with a with a base gasket or whatever um, they're often the squish is too large I think when they're uh, when the when the standard so it's a good opportunity to get that down and then they do run better. So that's this 250 one. So that's one uh, re-sleeve that we've just done. I'll just go and get the uh, 400. So this one has been a much bigger job. I did put a picture of this on my Facebook and Instagram and that when I was given the barrel. I was pretty confident we could do something. Basically this whole bottom section of the barrel had been smashed off it was like literally in two pieces so this one has needed a lot more work so what have we had to do um well we've had to we've welded it from the outside thinking that we were going to get enough weld on it that it was going to be um suitable uh, but it wasn't, so we've then uh, taken it back to uh, the machine shop, the engineering company that I use, and they've uh, bored the original iron 
uh, sleeve out. So like I say, they're cast in, it won't just press out. So they've bored the original iron sleeve out and then um, we've then gone back and re-welded it and we've been able to get into some of it from the inside and then finished up the weld job on the outside and then when it had been welded on the outside some of it had distorted so we then needed to take a skim off here and we could then bore the rest of the barrel to be the right size for the new liner so that's two bores so two weld jobs two bores and um Then we've then pressed the new liner in, so then just the same as the 250 really. Pressed the new liner in using the dry ice and the heat, uh, and then had it reboard again. And this one um, just needs a tiny, tiny little bit of port work, because some of the ports just don't match up exactly. Uh, but that can definitely be, definitely be sorted with a little bit of TLC from... Uh, a decent porter um, so there we go so that's uh, one damaged cylinder I mean if you look you can see the amount of weld that's gone on there it's huge uh, it was massively damaged and uh, so this has been resurrected really from the from the scrap bin really is where it would have gone for a lot of people but uh, this will definitely, definitely go again. So with this one, we've taken a skim off the bottom and we've taken a skim off the top. So this one is going to need careful attention when putting back to make sure that that squish is right uh, and that um, it's not gonna hit the, hit the head, the piston's not gonna hit the head. There we go. So two, uh, two examples of a uh, re-liner job that we've just done and uh, hopefully you can uh, appreciate the work that goes in to them and um, the fact that these are now going to have a new lease of life and uh, they'll be uh, out on the on the racing scene uh, this year.